Our call to confession uh, comes once again from Psalm 51, this time from verses 5 through 6. Our God calls us confession with this word this morning. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Uh, this morning as we confess our sins and learn better how to confess our sins, I want to say something very quickly about what David means when he says, Behold, uh, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Uh, so iniquity means pollution. And what David is saying is that when he was born, he was born, like all of us, with a polluted heart. And that his heart has always been polluted. That's what he means when he says uh, that his mother conceived him in sin. It doesn't mean that his mother committed a sin and he was born, or that him being born was a sin, or him being in a womb was a sin. It just means from the moment of conception, his heart has been polluted. Uh, now here's why David makes that point here in Psalm 51. Uh, when we sin, we tend to dissociate ourselves from our actions. Well, that wasn't me. Or that wasn't really me. Or the thing that I did, that was out of character. That's not in any way kind of definitional to who I am. And the reason that we dissociate ourselves, the reason that we do that, is because it means that we get to shield ourselves from the work of repentance. Because if that action wasn't really me in any fundamental way, then I don't really need to change at all. I don't really need my repentance to include the work of putting to death the old and putting on the new in Jesus. I don't need to grow. I don't need to change. I don't need to mature. I just need to hope that I won't have that software error again. Right? Hopefully that glitch doesn't show up again. Wouldn't that be nice if the software in my body was just perfect, like I know it always is? Uh, David doesn't do that. No, he says, it was me that sinned. And I know it was me because sin has been in my heart my entire life. I am capable of that. In fact, I did that. And Father, I need to change. And that's why what he says next. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. And what David is saying is, God, just as sin comes from deep within my heart, so does righteousness. If you put it there, Jesus, if you teach me, if you change me, if you help me, I can become a different person, a person who will act from the deep places of godly wisdom and love that you have built up in my heart through the gospel of your son. And so here in these verses, what David is doing is he is owning the reality of sin in his heart so that he can ask God to replace it with righteousness. He's not asking only for forgiveness. He's also asking for change, for instruction, for help in maturing in Jesus. And my friends, that is part of what our confession of sin needs to include. It's not only a desire to be forgiven. It is that. But it's also a desire to be different. To have God actually act on us and in us so that we can be changed from the inside out. To confess sin is not simply to say that I am a person who has committed this wrong. It's also to say, I want to change and become a different kind of person so that the next time the situation arises, I will act like Jesus and not like I did however many minutes, days, or hours ago. Uh, and that can happen, God, if you teach me to live like Christ. Uh, my friends, if we confess our sins this morning, let's own the kinds of hearts that we have so that we can honestly ask Jesus not only for forgiveness, but also for growth and change through the power of his gospel. Uh, let's have the courage this morning to ask Jesus not only for forgiveness, but also for sanctification, for living more and acting more like our Savior. And we'll do that this morning by first singing our corporate confession together, I think. Yes. Uh, and then we'll have a time of silent confession where we can confess our individual sins individually. 
Let's stay seated while we sing hymn number 338, Spirit of God, descend on my heart. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ loves to assure his people of his pardon, and he also wants us to know uh, that his pardon not only includes forgiveness, but also empowerment uh, for new life. And that's really what this word from John 14 is, is all about. It's, a, it's, a word, it's not a word that Jesus gives us to test our faith. It's a word God gives us to assure us of faith. This is very important. Sometimes we take verses where Jesus says things like he says here, and we're like, this is to tell me if I really love Jesus or not. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is telling his disciples as he prepares to leave for heaven, I know that you love me, and therefore you can be confident that you will be able to serve me because I love you. And beloved, if you are repenting of your sins and trusting in Christ by faith, which is a sign of his love, hear this word of pardon and empowerment for you from Jesus, from John chapter 14. Jesus says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and we'll make our home with him. Beloved, let's receive this word into our heart by confessing 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4 together. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises. Amen. Beloved, you have nothing to hide. I am forgiven in Christ. You have nothing to prove. 
I am righteous in Christ, and you have nothing to fear. I am loved in Christ. Amen. Let's stand together. Let's celebrate by singing hymn number 468, My Faith Has Found a Resting Place. Thank you.